Let's work chapter 6, problem 42. We have an output machine, which is a pulley holding two masses. Um, for a problem like this, it's important that you realize that your usual coordinate system is not going to work uh, quite well for you. If you have your Y coordinate this way and your X coordinate this way, uh, it's a little strange because this mass will move up in the y direction, but this mass will be moving down in the negative y direction. So it's strange that as something, uh, as the system moves up, apparently it also moves down. What works best for a problem like this is to have a curved coordinate system that follows the motion of the wire. So this could be your y direction and I'll normally choose that because we measure angles from the positive x-axis to the y-axis and so I would normally choose that uh, but in this case uh, they tell me that block 1 has a mass of 2 kilograms and block 2 has a mass of 4 kilograms so I know what's going to happen the system's actually going to rotate in the opposite direction. Uh, so for convenience, I'm just going to make this my positive y direction. So when this mass is going up and this mass is going down, I will say that the system is moving in the positive y direction. All right, so part A is find the equation for the acceleration of the two blocks. So, because I already explained that my y coordinate follows this path, I can say that I have an acceleration due to gravity here, g, which gives rise to a force, mg. All right, so, um, I could call that F2. I could have a force here as well, the force of gravity, times M1. Okay, now according to this system that I set up, F1 then would be in the negative y direction. So then my equation would be F2 in the positive y direction minus f1 in the negative y direction would be equal to my total force which is mass times acceleration which mass am I using there? I'm using the total mass alright so uh, f2 is equal to m2g and since everything's in the y direction I can um, I can now ignore the y hats and just use the magnitudes m2g minus m1g has to be equal to the total mass which is m1 plus m2 times my resultant acceleration I can factor out g so I have g times m2 minus m1 is equal to m1 plus m2 times a and so then my acceleration becomes m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2 times g all I did is I divided this quantity by this quantity. Okay, so that's part A. I found my acceleration. Now for part B, which asks to find the tension, 
I can look just at one of the masses uh, as a system. The reason being is that tension will be the same all along the string. So tension here is equal to the tension in this part of the rope, or this part of the rope, or this part of the rope. Tension's the same all throughout the rope. So I can just look at one of the uh, masses. And so for instance, if I look at mass 2, here is mass 2. In this direction, I have the tension. And in this direction, I have the weight. So, my, um, my equation <coughs> for the acceleration of M2 would be M2G would be equal to, I'm sorry, M2A. That's what I meant to write. So, M2A, which is M2 times its resultant acceleration, has to be equal to M2G, and I leave that as positive because that's in the positive y direction as I set up my coordinate system minus the tension and I made that negative because the tension would be in that direction it's trying to pull m2 in the negative y direction okay so then just a matter of substituting my previous equation and solving for the tension Let's go ahead and solve for the tension first. So I'm going to bring M2 over to the other side. So I have M2A minus M2G is equal to the negative tension. I can uh, factor out M2. M2 times a minus g is equal to the negative tension and I can get rid of the negative sign by flipping the order of these two quantities so then I can have m2 times g minus a will be equal to the tension all right now I take that equation I simplify it and I should get my answer so let me write it down again. I have that the tension is equal to M2G minus A. So tension will be M2 times G minus A, which is this whole quantity. I can factor out G and I have 1 minus M2 minus M1 over M2 plus M1 I need to distribute that negative and put it in a common denominator. Let's just put it as one single common denominator. Okay, so as you can see, 1 is equal to m2 plus m1 over m2 plus m1. 
as equal to 1, which is what I use there to put everything in a common denominator. And then I just distributed this negative number, this negative, and I got negative m2 and positive m1. You see there's some uh, useful cancellations here, which are that this m2 is going to cancel that m2. And so then my answer is going to be, let's give myself a little bit more room. That the tension is equal to m2 times 2m1 because that m1 is going to add over m1 plus m2 times g.